trip back to uh, the Obama administration coming under serious fire right now for its response to Benghazi. Also, the IRS scrutiny of conservative groups and now suddenly the seizure of phone records from the Associated Press. Joining us, our CNN chief political analyst, Gloria Borgia, and our chief national correspondent, John King. Uh, quickly, uh, let me start with you, John. You used to work for the Associated right. Press. Uh, when you heard about this, that uh, the, the Justice Department secretly monitoring phone calls from reporters and editors of the AP, supposedly looking into uh, allegations, someone's leaking information to them. How did you react when you heard that? If you work in our business, and I worked at the Associated Press for 12 years, so I have a personal tie to that company, this is very chilling. Uh, this is very chilling. The government uh, gets angry about leaks of classified information. I understand that, and they have ways to investigate them. Uh, but did they cross the line here? Did they do something inappropriate here? Did they possibly do something you know, that went over legal barriers here? It's when this happens, However it happens, it sends a chilling message from the government to people in our business, and the AP, I think, is justifiably outraged. I think all of us as journalists react negatively right. when we hear these stories, although if you take a look from the other side, if there was a serious leak about an al-Qaeda operation or whatever, they're trying to find out who may be leaking this information to the news media. Do they well, occasionally have the right to secretly monitor well, our phone a, calls? That's a matter up for discussion. I remember during the Scooter Libby uh, uh, stuff during the Bush administration, there were phone records, there were emails, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, you know, I think this is chilling for journalists because, you know, you have to have that kind of privacy in order to do your work. And they wanted to get phone numbers. They wanted to monitor the phone calls to right. see who was making calls, how long those calls were. Uh, it's, uh, it's stuff that's going to be investigated, I'm sure, yeah. right. down the road. Uh, uh, Gloria, you got a strong piece on CNN.com uh, about the Benghazi uh, right. uproar. And, and, you, and you refer to the, that famous line, the cover-up is always worse than the original crime. A lot of us remember that from Watergate. But among other things, you write this, apply that cliche to Benghazi. And questions about the motive for removing the terror link from talking points about the Libyan attack in the closing months of an election. Maybe there's a corollary question that we ought to be asking. In politics, when did spin trump everything, even the truth? Uh, that's, I don't know the answer to that question, but if you look at it in terms of this particular case, you know, there are a couple things going on. First of all, this was in the heat of a fall election campaign heading up to the presidential campaign. Benghazi was an issue. It's clear politically the Democrats didn't want to make it more of an issue than it was. Mitt Romney had made some mistakes in talking about Benghazi, so they were happy uh, to leave it there. Secondarily, we also had some differences between the CIA and the State Department about how to best handle this. The CIA put the information out there. It was very clear the State Department wanted less information out there. Uh, than the CIA did. That's bureaucratic infighting. We're used to that in Washington. But it did affect the dissemination of the truth. And we wound up with knowing something that actually turned out to be because false. Because those, those various iterations of those talking points, 12 different versions, wound up with Susan Rice, the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, going out those telling the American people story that was inaccurate. And I'm paraphrasing your last guest, the chairman of the committee, the oversight committee looking into this, but he said it was from the truth to a lie in 12 steps, meaning the 12 versions, rewrites of those talking points. So here's the question. Were they rewritten to protect people at the State Department, to protect the President of the United States in a campaign you don't want terrorism in there, protect Secretary Clinton, or were they rewritten because there was tension between the State Department and the CIA because one of the less told truths, it's not an untold truth, is that the Benghazi was essentially mostly a CIA storefront right. where you had some State Department personnel and at the State Department there was a great deal of resentment saying they were getting talking points from the CIA saying you were warned you should have protected your people. At the State Department, they were saying, wait a minute, most of those people are your people. <laughs> right. So do we have two agencies fighting each other within the United States government, or do we have some people in the State Department trying to politically protect the leadership of their department and perhaps the president? That is one of the questions that hopefully, if we have a investigation that goes after the truth and not partisanship, we can answer. And we'll see what happens uh, in the immediate days, because neither of these subjects is going to go away, guys. Thanks very much.